Welcome to Washington Hospital Today, dedicated to informing residents about health care topics and issues. Through programs featuring community forums and free health and wellness classes, our goal is to empower community members with the information needed to make informed health decisions. Washington Hospital has been providing health care to the residents of the Washington Township Healthcare District for the past 60 years. Hello, welcome to today's presentation, Happy Heart, Treatment Options for Aortic Stenosis, presented by Dr. Nawar Mustafa, Interventional Cardiologist with Washington Township Medical Foundation. Dr. Mustafa is an interventional cardiologist with special interest in prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of heart attacks and heart valve problems. He has a passion for teaching and is a well-experienced clinical educator with previous academic appointments at Ohio University, University of Kentucky School of Medicine, and the University of Pikeville. As a fellow, Dr. Mustafa won the prestigious American Heart Association Young In Investigator Award and has recently earned his Global Clinical Research Scholar Certificate from Harvard to build on his early career research contributions and refine his skills. Please welcome Dr. Mustafa. Thank you, Christy, for the introduction. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us on this rainy Thursday to talk about aortic stenosis. Before we move forward, my name is Nuwar Mustafa. I'm an interventional cardiologist at an internal medicine doctor with extra training to specialize in, treat in treating of heart conditions. Closely related specialty is cardiothoracic surgeon or cardiovascular surgery. That's a surgeon who specializes in the treatment of heart condition. Sometimes either one of us could be called cardiovascular specialist. Sometimes we get confused with the names. We can't talk about the, uh, the heart valve and the heart without talking about the circulation. The cartoon on the screen with the heart in the center the function of the heart is to receive blood from the body, pump it back to uh, lungs to get oxygenated, and then come back to the heart, to the left side of the heart, and then pushed back through to the rest of the body. The most important part of the heart, the uh, main chamber, is the left ventricle. It pushes the blood through the aortic valve to the rest of the body, through the largest artery in the body, the aorta. The, all the blood that goes to uh, all organs of the body has to go through uh, this aortic valve. So what's a valve? A valve is a flap of tissue or a group of flaps of tissue that control the blood flow. You could think of it as a gate or a doorway. It makes sure that the blood flow one direction in the heart and it goes where it's supposed to go. It, when, it's, when it's closed, it's not supposed to let blood flow back or leak back where it came from. There's four valves in the heart. There's two in the right and two in the uh, left. The uh, one we are concerned with is the aortic valve. Uh, it's, you can see it in the top part of the screen that leads from the left ventricle, that's the thick chamber of the heart that pushes the blood uh, to the rest of the body and connecting it to the aorta, the largest artery in the body. Valves, when they're working normally, they are very thin and move freely. When they're open, they're open all the way, and when they're closed, they're closed tightly so that they won't allow back leakage. When the valve, for any reason is thickened and uh, difficult to move and doesn't open all the way out, that's when we call it a stenosis. And the other problem of a valve would be when it doesn't close all the way and then allow backflow of the blood, that's usually called regurgitation. Sometimes we call it insufficiency. Sometimes we call it just leaky valves. All these are names for the same thing. Sometimes you have the same problem together. The valve doesn't open all the way and it doesn't close all the way as well. You could think of it as if it's been stuck in the middle. Back to the aortic valve. The aortic valve is made of three leaflets or three, three flaps of tissue that they thin, 
and very mobile, open and close uh, normally. When the valve is diseased, then they, when it's supposed to be open, it does not open all, all the way, or when it's supposed to be closed, it doesn't close all the way. Stenosis happen when it's not opening all the way. When that happens, the heart has to work hard, extra effort to try to push the blood through. So what caused aortic stenosis? Aortic stenosis happen, as we said, when the valve is thickened. A lot of time is because of calcium deposition on the valve. Uh, it happens because of the wear and tear that happen in the valve with opening and the closing. The heart beats uh, more than 100,000 times a day, and they, with each beat, the valve open and the close. With the years, with time, Sometimes there is injury happen to the valve, it gets repaired, then scar tissue, then calcium deposition. That's why aortic stenosis is common later in life. We're talking about in the 60s, 70s, 80s of age. Another kind of valve called bicuspid valve, that's a congenitally abnormal valve that instead of three leaflet have two, can get calcification at earlier age. A third cause of uh, aortic stenosis that uh, thankfully they're not common anymore is rheumatic heart disease. That's infection that happened earlier in life, can cause inflammation of the valve, and many years later lead to aortic stenosis. Just a quick look at the bicuspid valve. In the top of the screen is a normal three cuspid or three leaflet valve, and then in the bottom there is the uh, bicuspid valve, the valve with two leaflets. Again, the bicuspid valve is, is as a cause of aortic stenosis at younger age, as young as 40 or 50 years of age. So what's the symptoms? Symptoms from aortic stenosis can vary and similar to many other heart conditions. Shortness of breath is a common one. Chest pain and fainting or syncope is another one. Uh, sometimes it can be not as dramatic, could be just feeling fatigued, feeling tired, unable to do things that you used to do before. Many people who having these symptoms will attribute it to age or other things. Uh, but sometimes it can be even scarier, people could die suddenly because of a very severely abnormal valve. Another thing that we pick these uh, abnormal valve with is when you see your doctor, the listening to the heart, listen for heart murmur. Heart murmur is the sound of the blood that rush through the narrowed valve. When the valve is normal, that process is smooth, we can't hear the blood flow. But when it is narrowed, then you, when the blood go through, it make a lot of noise. We can listen to it from the chest wall with a stethoscope, and that can be the first indication of an abnormal uh, valve. Once your doctor suspects aortic stenosis, might order some tests, electrocardiogram and EKG, let us know about uh, this, the condition of the heart. An ultrasound of the heart is the most important test that will let us we'll be able to look real time on the valve and while it's opening and closing, we could tell if the valve is normal or not, or when it's abnormal, how badly it is. Uh, CAT scan or an x-ray of the heart also can, can be done sometimes to get more details about that. And the final thing before considering treatment, heart cath can be ordered. That's just to check the valve as well as looking for other conditions of the heart that might affect the treatment, like CAD or coronary artery disease or blockages in the blood supply to the heart. So when it comes to treatment for non-severe aortic valve stenosis, that's mild or moderate, so the, what we do is observation. You will follow up with your doctor uh, routinely. They will check for the symptoms, they check for the murmur, and probably order an echo to make sure it has not got to be severe. Uh, once it gets severe, especially if the patient has symptoms, the only treatment available is aortic valve replacement. The valve has to be changed. And there's two ways to do that. The surgical way, which is open heart surgery, uh, trying to uh, take the patient will be uh, sedated, will be anesthetized, 
will be put on heart lung machine then the heart the chest will be opened and the heart will be opened the old valve removed and the new valve placed uh, in its place that's the most common way we did things for the last uh, 50 years or so the a newer procedure that is available it's called transcatheter aortic valve replacement and this procedure is less invasive And before we go into these two uh, uh, options, why do we do it? So the benefit of valve replacement is one, to live longer. It's shown that a, a, a narrowed valve, a severely abnormal valve, can result as in a sudden death and other problems. So replacing the valve will help the patient live longer as well as feel better. So the first option the surgical aortic valve replacement, or SAVR. As I said, this is a, a major open heart surgery. The patient would stay in the hospital about a week. Recovery time at home or uh, would be about six to eight weeks. Uh, we have more than 50 years of experience uh, doing this. The, this kind of procedure is done by a cardiovascular surgeon. So that's the kind of specialist who do this, this procedure. The second uh, uh, kind of procedure that can be done is the transcatheter aortic valve replacement, or TAVR. In this procedure, I'm trying to uh, play the video. All right. So uh, th with this procedure, a small incision is made in the groin, and then through that, a small tube is placed, and through that, uh, the new valve crimped over a balloon is advanced uh, in from the groin all the way up to the aorta and when we get it positioned in a place uh, this is the, the uh, animation showing it being advanced this kind of procedure is done by an interventional cardiologist and with cardiovascular surgeon so you see the valve is advanced through the narrowed valve, and then it positioned in a place, is done under uh, fluoroscopy, under x-ray guidance to know where we're going, and ultrasound as well. So here is being positioned where it needs to go, and this is a close-up on it, adjusting the actual location, and then the balloon goes up, the stent is in place, the balloon go down, we take this, we take the uh, equipment out to the groin and the groin site is closed with a suture or a closure device and that would conclude the procedure. The procedure, this kind of procedure take about an hour. Uh, at the end of the procedure, you could see this is a closer of the valve instead of the diseased one pushed to the side outside of this new one. This is completely opening and closing normally, which is amazing to be able to do this with a very small incision in the groin. So with this kind of procedure, it take one patient stay in the hospital one to two days. Recovery time is one to two weeks to let the groin small incision to heal. As we could see, this is less invasive procedure. Both options, the surgical and TAVR, has risk, and we always weigh risk versus benefits. The potential risk include stroke, bleeding, heart attack, and need for pacemaker. The technology has improved significantly where these risks are in the low side and manageable. So we have, for people with severe aortic stenosis, we have two options. So how to choose between them? Now, for certain patients, it will be clear that one or the other would not work. For example, if someone is uh, really sick and too sick to go under uh, open heart surgery, the only option available is TAVR. There's other people who have other problems that need open heart surgery for, like may have severe blockages in the heart or other valve that need problem. That's clear that they need the surgical option. But for many other patients, they, both options are viable, and they could be decided on which one to go. And the way 
we decide on that is using the heart team approach. The heart team is the patient along with his local cardiologist who's treating them. Then there is the interventional cardiologist who's going to be doing the TAVR and the cardiothoracic surgeon who might be doing the open heart surgery along with an anesthesia doctor, an echocardiographer, and the OR staff. So they discuss the case in details, and then they come with an agreement on what's the best option for the specific patients. Now, once we did, they, they come up with the kind of the risk and benefit of each approach, of what they think is uh, appropriate for that patient, the doctor will share this information with the patient. The patient will consider the option, and together they make a decision. So the best way to do this is with shared decision making. We want the patient to be partners in care. The, re the doctors are expert on the disease. They are expert in aortic valve stenosis and how we can treat it. But you, the patient, is the expert on you. You know best what you prefer, what you, uh, what's your values uh, is, what you're looking at. So when this information is provided to you, you, you could make an informed decision about what you uh, want to do. Some uh, helpful question that you could ask is, what's the condition? How it going to affect you? What, how the treatment, the different options of a treatment going to affect you? What's the pros and cons of those? And then you make uh, an informed decision on that. So, in summary, aortic valve replacement, uh, whether surgically or by catheter, help patients live longer and feel better, especially when it's done for severe aortic stenosis in the right patients. There's two ways of doing it, surgically or transcatheter. That's the short term for these, as is SAVR and TAVR. TAVR is less invasive but the risk of needing a pacemaker may be higher with TAVR. And more is known about the long-term results after uh, SAVR. So it is very important for the patient to collaborate with the heart team to find out which option is right for you. Thank you very much for, for your attention. Thank you. We do have some questions today. Uh, the first question is, uh, is a valve clog like a clogged artery, and how are the treatments different? Yes, the a clogged valve and the clogged artery share a lot of things. At the end, there is a narrowing that prevents the blood flow. The, and they share the similar risk factors as well. The difference is the valve is much larger structure and bigger and is more difficult to treat. That's why we have transcatheter treatment for a clogged artery for a longer period of time before we were able to, to do that for the, the valve because it's just require a bigger uh, equipment. More important than that, the valve has a function of two things. One, it, it has to open when it's supposed to open and to close when it's supposed to be closed. For the arteries, they just need to be open. There is no active motion opening or closing. So it's a simpler problem to treat technically. Okay, thank you. And the next question is, can lifestyle affect the valve function? Yes. Lifestyle, healthy lifestyle, help the heart in general. It helped the, uh, we, I mean, although it's not proven, it's for the valve itself, whether it affects developing aortic stenosis or not, but it affects the health of the heart. Think of it this way. When the valve is narrowed, the heart muscle, the heart pump, has to work extra time and extra hard to push the blood through that narrowed valve. If you have other problem with your heart, like a blockage or a previous heart attack, then that, the job would be much more difficult. Now, this is, that said, uh, the uh, the health li the the valve itself cannot once it's severe the, we can't treat it with medicine or with lifestyle changes it's more of an, a prevention uh, effort other lifestyle choices for example uh, uh, drug use especially IV drug use can cause infection of a valve 
this disease valve can catch infection easily. Once a bacteria get into the blood, they can get stuck to this disease valve. Things like as simple as diseased gum. If someone has inflammation of their gum and they, when they've uh, brushed their teeth, have a, for example, have a blood come out, sometimes that's enough for the bacteria to go in. So we always recommend for, for this valve health is like r routine or regular dental care has become very important before you have the valve replaced and after because also the prosthetic valve the new valve you got can also catch infection so you want to make sure to minimize any chance that the valve get infected okay and our final question you mentioned symptoms such as shortness of breath not being able to do some physical activities that you would normally do at what point would you see your doctor or go to the emergency room? Yes, there is certain symptoms that can be uh, alarming and they should take care to go to the emergency or call 911 immediately. One of them, like if someone faint or pass out, especially if they have known to have aortic stenosis. Another thing is if someone develops severe chest pain that doesn't go away in, in a few minutes or severe shortness of breath, that's a significant change from the before, the safer route is to get that evaluated. However, commonly the valve, the aortic valve symptoms and many heart symptoms, you can develop gradually. And basically, you you're you're not, you might not have shortness of breath at rest, but you start walking and toward the end of your walk, you feel you're getting more short of breath. These kind of milder symptoms probably talk with your doctor about it and then it can be taken care of as an outpatient. But any significant change of what you're doing before, especially if it's happening at rest or with minimal exertion, require urgent attention. Great, thank you so much for answering these questions and thank you Dr. Mustafa for this insightful presentation. This concludes our program and thank you viewers for tuning in. The entire broadcast of today's presentation will be available on our Facebook page and YouTube.